point? No, or? Uh, you know, you can't make peace. I mean, uh, let's be realistic here. You can't make peace when someone has been so, so nefarious in my in my opinion, so like horrible. Because everyone made out well. I've never heard of that in my life. Spielberg doesn't have the rights to drugs. In other words, the studio owns it. How he got that, I don't know. Which means I have to beg him. That can I do this? Can I do that? Yeah. So I can't forgive that. Right. Do you, do you have like? Do you feel like I will, can never watch Creed three kind of thing? Never. The support pouring in for Cat Williams from both celebrities and regular folks is just mind-blowing. I'm talking about that infamous interview of his on Club Shay Shay. Yeah, that thing blew up big time, racking up close to 60 million views. It was like the whole world had its eyes glued to the screen. But guess what? Sylvester Stallone, yes, you heard it right, Rocky himself, has apparently jumped on the Cat Williams bandwagon. Now, you might be scratching your head wondering what Sly's got to do with all this. I mean, they're from completely different realms in Hollywood, right? But get this. Rumor has it that not only is Stallone throwing his weight behind Cat, but he's also gearing up to spill some tea of his own. Word on the street is that despite Sylvester's immense success and legendary status, he's had his fair share of backstabbing in Tinseltown. That's right, even someone as huge as Stallone hasn't been immune to the cutthroat nature of Hollywood. But who can blame Sylvester for wanting to let loose and spill the beans? It's no secret that Hollywood's got a ruthless side, and even the biggest names aren't safe from its grip. So, if Stallone's ready to take a page out of Kat's book and dish it all out, then I say bring on the popcorn because this showdown's going to be one for the history books. So, Sylvester Stallone is practically a Hollywood legend, right? From the iconic Rocky series to the adrenaline-pumping Expendables, Stallone's left his mark on the big screen. But here's the kicker. Despite being the brains behind Rocky, he doesn't actually own the rights to the franchise. Last year, Michael B. Jordan graced our screens with Creed III. But hold up, where's our main man Stallone as Rocky Balboa? I mean, he was front and center alongside Jordan in the first two Creed flicks, even bagging himself an Oscar nom for his K-performance in the 2015 debut, but in Creed 3, nowhere to be seen. Sure, they throw Rocky's name around a bit, but his actual whereabouts, total mystery. And get this, it's the first time in a whopping nine films and a staggering 47 years that a Rocky movie doesn't feature Rocky Balboa. So, why the disappearing act? Well, it seems Stallone wasn't exactly feeling the vibe of Creed 3. Plus, he's been having a bit of a tiff with Erwin Winkler, the big shot producer of the Rocky franchise, and their feud is still playing out. Creed 3, scripted by Keenan Coogler and Zach Balin from a story they cooked up with original Creed director Ryan Coogler, is a far darker take on the uplifting, Rocky franchisee. According to Variety's film critic Owen Glaberman, this one's more of a gritty thriller than your classic underdog sports drama. Now, here's where things get interesting. Stallone, the man behind Rocky himself, had some thoughts about the direction they took with Creed 3. He wasn't exactly thrilled about the whole darker tone situation. He told THR that he's more of a sentimentalist, preferring his heroes to take a beating but not venture into that deep, dark space. It's all about keeping things a bit lighter, you know? He said, that's a regretful situation because I know what it could have been. It was taken in a direction that is quite different than I would have taken it. It's a different philosophy. Erwin Winkler's and Michael B. Jordan's. I wish them well, but I'm much more of a sentimentalist. I like my heroes getting beat up, but I just don't want them going into that dark space. I just feel people have enough darkness. But hey, it's not just Stallone in the ring. Michael B. Jordan, who's been K-It as Adonis Creed, had his own vision for the movie. He wanted to focus solely solely on Adonis without the safety net of Rocky by his side. Makes sense, right? The first Creed was all about their dynamic duo, while Creed II saw Adonis forging his own path. So for Jordan, it was a natural progression to let Adonis shine solo in Creed III. First of all, Sly and Rocky's DNA is through this entire franchise, Jordan told Hot 97 ahead of the third film's opening. You can't have these movies without that. That underdog spirit, I think, connects the underdog in all of us. I want Adonis to stand on his own two feet. In order to do that, we had to go into the past. What were those transformative years, those childhood traumas that shaped Adonis today? I think the room for this story was really about Adonis Creed moving forward with his family and having him move forward. That's kind of how we rolled out the story 
for this one. Stallone's clash with Winkler is an even bigger reason for his absence in Creed 3, so big that it might mean Stallone never plays Rocky again. These two have been at odds for ages over who owns the rights to the Rocky franchise. Can you believe it? Stallone basically handed over those rights back in the day when he was just a struggling actor, not realizing the gold mine he had on his hands. Now fast forward to last November, and Stallone spills the tea to Sirius XM's Jessica Shaw. He's talking about how cutting ties with the Rocky franchise for Creed 3 was one heck of an emotional roller coaster. According to him, you can't just make peace with someone who's been as, well, shady as Winkler has been, in Stallone's book at least. Uh, you know, you can't make peace. I mean, uh, let's be realistic here. You can't make peace with someone who's been so, so nefarious in my, in my and get this Stallone isn't shy about airing his grievances. Back in 2019, he laid it all out in an interview with Variety. Despite raking in the dough from the original Rocky and snagging some sweet deals on the sequels, Stallone doesn't hold the keys to those beloved characters. I have zero ownership of Rocky, Stallone told Variety at the time. Every word, every syllable, every grammatical error was all my fault. It was shocking that it never came to be, but I was told, hey, you got paid, so what are you complaining about? I was furious. The clash between Stallone and Winkler over Rocky rights was reignited in 2022. Stallone threw some major shade in a now-deleted post on Instagram, posting a pic of Winkler as a snake with a tongue made of knives. A very flattering portrait of the great Rocky Creed producer, Erwin Winkler, from one of the country's greatest, Stallone wrote in the caption. After Erwin controlling Rocky for over 47 years, and now Creed, I really would like to have at least a little of what's left of my rights back before passing it on to only your children. I believe that would be a fair gesture from this 93-year-old gentleman, but wait, it gets juicier. A few weeks later, MGM announced it was developing a new Rocky spin-off movie centered on the Drago family. Dolph Lundgren starred as Rocky's Russian rival Ivan Drago in Rocky IV, while Florian Muntianu debuted as Ivan's son in Creed II. Robert Lawton was hired to pen the script. Stallone spoke out publicly against the spin-off and said he was never told about its development. Another heartbreaker. Just found this out. Once again, this pathetic 94-year-old producer and his moronic, useless vulture children, Charles and David, are once again picking clean the bones of another wonderful character I created without even telling me, Stallone wrote in a now-deleted post on Instagram. I apologize to the fans. I never wanted Rocky characters to be exploited by these parasites. By the way, I have nothing but respect for Dolph, but I wish he had told me what was going on behind my back, Stallone added at the time. Keep your real friends close. Lundgren then got involved by telling Rocky fans to relax after Stallone called out the spin-off. Just to set the record straight regarding a possible Drago spin-off, there's no approved script, no deals in place, no director, and I was personally under the impression that my friend Sly Stallone was involved as a producer or even as an actor, Lundgren wrote. There was a press leak last week which was unfortunate, in touch with Mr. Balboa, just so all the fans can relax. There you go. Stallone and Lundgren might have kissed and made up, but Stallone Stallone's beef with Winkler? Still sizzling. As long as Winkler holds the keys to the Rocky Kingdom, it seems like Stallone's beloved character might be stuck in cinematic limbo. But hey, Stallone's no stranger to speaking out against Hollywood injustices. Remember when he called out the discrimination his buddy Carl Weathers faced before he passed away? It's like Stallone's always ready to fight for what's right, on and off the screen. A few days ago, Sylvester Stallone paid a heart-wrenching tribute to Carl Weathers, his dear friend and collaborator, who tragically passed away. Stallone, visibly upset, stood in front of a painting capturing a momentous scene between the two, pouring his emotions out to honor Weathers. In a raw and emotional moment, Stallone shared, Today is an incredibly sad day for me. I'm so torn up I can't even tell you because Carl Weathers was such an integral part of my life, my success, everything about it. He didn't hold back in giving credit to Weathers, acknowledging the profound impact he had on his own life and the success of the iconic Rocky franchise. Reflecting on the first time he saw Weathers, Stallone reminisced, I give him incredible credit. When he walked into that room and I saw him for the first time, I saw greatness, but I didn't realize how great. Stallone admitted that achieving what they did with Rocky wouldn't have been possible without Weathers, praising his brilliance, powerful voice, imposing size, athleticism, and most importantly, his heart and soul. As Stallone stood before the painting, he shared a poignant moment. I'm standing here in front of this painting because it was probably the last moment we were ever in the ring together and I'll never forget it. The emotion in his voice was palpable, and he struggled to hold back tears as he signed off with a heartfelt, he was magic, and I was so fortunate.
fortunate to be part of his life. So Apollo, keep punching. It's a touching tribute that gives us a glimpse into the profound impact Carl Weathers had on Stallone's life, both professionally and personally. Man, watching Stallone almost break down while paying tribute to his buddy Weathers was absolutely gut-wrenching. It got a lot of fans thinking there might be more to the story of Weathers' passing, something Stallone might need to get off his chest. Stallone spilled some tea on the discrimination Weathers faced, especially when it came to the Rocky series. It's wild to think that Weathers wasn't even on the radar for the role of Apollo Creed initially. But here's the kicker. He only landed the part because Stallone pushed for him. Imagine if Sly hadn't fought for Carl. We might have missed out on one of the most iconic characters in movie history. So, how did our man Carl win the part if the studio wasn't vibing with him? Here's the kicker. He straight up insulted Sylvester Stallone during their reading of the script. Yep, you heard it right. Weathers dropped a comment that was so Apollo Creed-esque that Stallone couldn't ignore it. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Stallone spilled the beans, saying, Weathers' remark felt so authentic to the character that he just had to cast him. Carl spilled the beans in an interview with The Rich Eisen Show, saying, We read through the scene, and at the end of it, I didn't feel like it had really sailed, that the scene had sailed, and they were quiet, and there was this moment of awkwardness I felt anyway. Anyway. So, I just blurted out, I could do a lot better if you got me a real actor to work with. He straight up dissed the star of the movie, Sylvester Stallone, without even realizing it. Now, here's where it gets crazy. Stallone, being the mastermind behind the script, knew exactly how each character should come off on the screen. Instead of getting offended, he was pleased with Weathers' bold and arrogant responses. He thought, this dude is the perfect fit for Apollo Creed. So, our man Carl unintentionally disrespected Rocky himself, but little did he know, that outburst was exactly what Stallone believed exemplified the swagger of Apollo Creed. It's one of those moments where mistakes actually work in your favor. Weathers' brash and bold attitude attitude during the audition not only got him the gig, but also made him a star. He carried that swagger and confidence through the entire 1980s, becoming an action hero for those who looked more like him than his white counterparts. Now, another chapter of how Carl Weathers kicked down the doors of Hollywood discrimination was through the legendary movie, Predator. This 1987 action horror flick was a whole different vibe from the Rocky series, but Weathers' character, Dylan, was still breaking norms for a black man in those times. You got appreciate how it all went down. In Predator, Weathers' Dylan wasn't just another sidekick or a token character. Nope, he was on the same level as the big man himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Dutch. Picture this, Dylan and Dutch's greeting was basically the most testosterone-filled handshake in cinema history. That moment, which is now a meme sensation, was more than just a cool visual. It was a powerful statement, especially considering the late 1980s Hollywood scene. You son of a... Let's put it into perspective, Schwarzenegger was the absolute king of the movie world back then, a former Mr. Universe, or as Weathers cheekily dubbed him on The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson in 1988, Mr. Everything. And here's the kicker, Arnie rarely, if ever, found his match on screen. I mean, the dude lifted a tree trunk and carried it like a bag of groceries in Commando, but then came Predator, and director John McTiernan flipped the script. Weathers' character in Predator, Dylan, wasn't just just there to play second fiddle. He got the same respect typically reserved for the action figures Schwarzenegger usually played. Even when Dylan loses the levitated arm wrestling match in that famous scene, the implication is that it's only because his new CIA desk job softened him up a little. It was like a cinematic revolution, breaking stereotypes and giving Weathers the spotlight he rightfully deserved. Predator turned into a game changer, proving that Weathers could stand toe to toe with the biggest star on the planet, both on and off screen. But wait, things are taking a dark turn. Now, while Sylvester Stallone may be famous for many things, well, turns out, controversy seems to have a bit of a soft spot for him. I mean, the dudes climbed the ladder from total obscurity to being one of Hollywood's biggest names, thanks to his unforgettable performances as the ultimate macho man. But here's the thing, behind all that flashy action and machismo, Stallone's personal life isn't exactly a walk in the park. Sure, he's got that rugged charm on screen, but off screen? Let's just say he's not exactly winning any awards for being Mr. Nice Guy. So picture this. It's a regular February morning in 2016, right before the whole hashtag MeToo movement really took off. You're scrolling through your news feed, sipping on your morning coffee, when BAM! Headlines hit you like a ton of bricks. 
turns out there's this bombshell report alleging that Sylvester Stallone, yes, the Rocky and Rambo legend himself, was involved in a SA case with a minor. I mean, here's this larger-than-life action hero we've all grown up admiring, and suddenly, there's this dark cloud hanging over his reputation. Reported first by the Baltimore Post-Examiner, the incident which took place 37 years ago at the Las Vegas Hilton on July 26, 1986, mentioned a 16-year-old girl consenting to ASEX encounter with Sylvester Stallone, who was at the venue filming his 1987 film, Over the Top. However, following their encounter, the Hollywood star welcomed a third party into their midst, the actor's former bodyguard, Michael the Duke DeLuca. According to the police report filed two days after the incident, DeLuca and Sylvester Stallone made the girl perform oral SEX before she was R-worded by the former at Suite 2767, where Stallone was residing at the time. The report further mentioned, Stallone made the comment that they were both married men and that she could not tell anybody about the incident and if she did, that they would have to beat her head in. Although at the time she thought the comment were meant as a joke, decades later, the victim revealed in an interview that she wasn't so sure anymore. As was confirmed by the Baltimore Post Examiner and corroborated by the victim, as well as retired Las Vegas Metro Police Department Detective Sergeant John Samilovich, who was also head of the SA unit during the time of the incident, the police report that provided a graphic, disturbing, and detailed account of the A was indeed all true. The minor also claimed at the time that she was scared and did not want to prosecute the men after the incident had occurred. The victim came forward 30 years later and revealed to the Baltimore Post examiner that she wanted Stallone to be held accountable for his actions. Stallone should be ashamed of himself. What he did to me affected my life and destroyed me. I can never forget the smirk Mike DeLuca had on his face as he looked at me as I left the room. She indicated that if the SEX encounter had only been with Stallone, she would not pursue this matter, but due to the fact that Mike, the bodyguard, became involved in the SEX incident. She didn't know what she wanted to do, the police report states. She became very uncomfortable with the situation. She states she did not want to have any type of SEX contact with the bodyguard, but felt she had no choice in the matter. She states there was no actual physical force, but she did feel intimidated. Now Stallone's representatives and spokeswoman have vehemently denied all allegations after the publication of the Baltimore Post Examiner's scathing report. This is a ridiculous, categorically false story. Michelle Bega, spokeswoman for 71-year-old Stallone said in a statement to ET, adding that Stallone says, it never happened. No one was ever aware of this story until it was published today, including Mr. Stallone. At no time was Mr. Stallone ever contacted by any authorities or anyone else regarding this matter. According to the police report, the teen didn't want to pursue charges against Stallone and DeLuca, though she told police she was scared and humiliated. The Daily Mail reports that she later signed a no-prosecution form and the matter was dropped. The actor had also previously been accused of similar charges by his late half-sister, who threatened him with a lawsuit in 1987. The charges were settled out of court. DeLuca, the other accused in the police report from 1986, was later K in a police shootout incident at Port Huenemi in 2013. But that's not all. Stallone's all-American workhorse brand continues to be marred by a string of SA allegations, all of which Stallone has denied. In 2018, the Los Angeles Angeles County District Attorney's Office said there was not enough evidence to prosecute the star over allegations that he SA'd a woman in 1987 and 1990. The issue was raised in 2017 and, according to NBC, it was outside of the statute of limitations. Then, back in 2007, the actor pleaded guilty for illegally importing 48 vials of banned human growth hormone into Australia. According to Reuters, Stallone said he was taking the hormones under doctor's supervision for a medical condition. He added that he was not aware of customs rules and did not intend to break the law. There has long been commentary about Stallone's alleged use of steroids too, but when his ex-girlfriend Janice Dickinson claimed that she had seen him juice, he denied it. Also, before he rose to fame in the iconic Rocky film, Stallone was just another actor trying to make it big. In 1970, when he was 24 years old, he got the lead role in an adult film, The Party, at Kitty and Studs. According to Far Out magazine, it was Stallone's first shot at being on the big screen. Per the publication, Stallone said he was living in a bus station at the time and, it was either do that movie or rob someone because I was at the end, at the very end, of my rope. The film was later re-released under the title The Italian
Italian stallion in an attempt to capitalize on Stallone's fame. And then there's the feud with Arnold Schwarzenegger. They were pitted against each other as major rivals at the height of their careers, so it's no surprise that there were bad vibes between Arnold and Stallone at some point. Per CNN, Schwarzenegger, who also released a Netflix documentary earlier this year, confirmed as much, saying, it got out of control and we tried to derail each other. However, Schwarzenegger added that their relationship changed when they both decided to invest in Planet Hollywood, which saw the duo jetting around the world together to promote the business, and they eventually became friends. So, Stallone's story just goes to show that celebs aren't immune to drama. It's like they're just regular folks dealing with their own share of messiness, but with the whole world watching. But despite all that, Stallone still got a massive fan base. He's the people's champ through and through. But what do you guys reckon about this whole situation? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next video.